good evening. And in order to follow up the stuff on transits and uh, look further into the present uh, transit of uh, Neptune through the Pi uh, through Pisces, the sign of Pisces, it's going to be there for at least uh, what uh, another seven years or so, perhaps slightly less. Neptune transits through any sign takes about 14, 14 and a half years. Its whole transit cycle around to its own place will take somewhere between 164, 165 years. Whenever it goes over a place in a horoscope, it may go past fairly quickly within less, just slightly, slightly less than a year. But usually I've seen that it stays round. It kind of hangs around. It's rather like a cold that doesn't go away or something in a state or an experience that, that, that you're passing through. Rather like swimming through something, it, it hangs around and it feels as if you've been veiled or cloaked with something. And uh, usually this takes you inwardly. Uh, so the, the sphere of Neptune um, is a kind of um, experience in which the ego becomes porous. Uh, the veils of either the unconscious or the unknown or some other sphere of uh, being enters through the isolate, the isolated ego of Saturn and the Sun. It's, it's as if the individual really does, when there's a transit on, the, the individual really does need to meet some other experience beyond itself. This is because on, um, on a very deep level, we are all connected to the same organism of the human family. Now, uh, Aquarius connects us to it by, by collegiateness, by an understanding of the human family. It's very much more a mental sign. It, it's understood as that we're part of a system or an ecosystem or a, a, a system of groups and people and towns and cities. And it, 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 it's a kind of interconnected web that we see through Aquarius. That's why it represents the, um, you know, the Internet and uh, large scale communications and the idea of brotherly love or, or, or I suppose it's even sisterly love now. Brotherhood means the brotherhood of man means everyone, of course the connectedness of the human family, the interrelationships. The great uh, scientist Rupert Sheldrake has gone out on an edge here to say even that the mind doesn't actually exist or the memory doesn't actually exist in the, in the brain. Somehow it's connected to the web or a, a group mind, which is very Aquarius. And a group mind is something we can tap into and and that we're actually part of so that our individual mind um, uh, seems to be connected as i say to a a kind of morphogenic field of humanity as sheldrake might say but when we come to the piscean field it's not just um the electrical networks it's uh, it's not just the in involvement so much as a, 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 a deeper substratum, a level of which one's whole life experience, one's very substance becomes part of everything. Um, it's at the biological level or if the nuclear, the nuclear level of, of ourselves, the neutrons and uh, atoms, that we're all the same, we're all part of one substance. And in that, in, in belonging to that, in experiences of sinking into um, that, that hole, that hole of a crowd, or going back into sleep, or, um, or sometimes when we're in a cinema, as I said in my last video, when we get involved with um, a, a film, uh, we give up a temporarily a kind we forget temporarily our own presence and enter into the story and the pictures that are being shown and we we equally go through it ourselves with some kind of personal experience but remember when we're in a cinema it, the trick of it is to get lost that's what they call the magic of cinema that it takes you through a drama you get involved with the characters of other people and that process by which you feel intimately involved, almost um, you've, you've been um, 
you've been not deceived but you, you've allowed yourself to, to be deceived by it we know it's an illusion in in the fact that it's not real it's a picture on a screen but we we're, we're taken in we uh, there's an allure i suppose to get involved and our mind sometimes has this thing where we forget and so we go through the drama and the experience with the music and the people and the characters and as such we become directly involved with our emotions with our spirit even and with our mind and to all extent and purposes we have in the temporarily lost ourselves and become totally involved in the experience of what is being shown that is the neptunian experience we we, we get it when we're in love uh, when there's a, a, a mutual a, a very stri strange kind of mutual chemical uh, sexual emotional embrace it's a deep empathic rapport with the other but it's not even rapport it's a kind of blending people with strong cancer in their chart or strong neptune or pisces often have this sense that uh, they can feel into other people when they think about them they can often tell what the what 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 their friend or associate or brother or sister or child what they're actually feeling at that particular point you might call this a a psychic um e element to the sign of pisces and to neptune but what it is is a, is a tapping into that arena of energy in life where we are connected I, I remember two clients many years ago both had their moon in Pisces they were born at different times but they both had their moon in Pisces in the 12th house and I remember um, uh, that one of them told me that they had a dream exactly the, which is exactly the same dream at exactly the same night as their sister and they both had this moon in Pisces in the 12th house and that meant to me that there was this psychic link I've had precognitive dreams myself and uh, there is that kind of world which is beyond the limits of the known of the ego uh, this is what also you might call the cloud of unknowing the cloud of unknowing is that which beyond the mind or the mentality and reason cannot reach unless it allows itself to surrender or be taken into a, 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 what is usually called an altered state but it's just a different state they used to be called altered states back in the 70s because it's altered from this uh, normal waking reality have but we enter this realm uh, uh, every night and both in sleep both in normal, uh, normal sleep and then deep sleep so to enter this Neptunian realm of self-forgetting and surrender to the experience and then also somehow feel into as if that experience is you is all part of this Piscean wave of experience. That's why I think the sign of Pisces uh, it has some distant memory to when they did belong to the sea. Uh, the sea in mythology uh, according to the Quran is the origins of all life but it's the great mother itself it's the it's the uh, uh, potential in life to bring form to things and if indeed we did come out of the sea it, it is a sense here that that world still belongs in us somewhere a fused state of being and the sign of Pisces are destined to be fish and fish belong to the formless sea they don't just swim around in a bath as if the the individual ego is a is a kind of set vehicle and it can only be at one place in one time uh, as i understand it fish don't have a long memory for things uh, uh, was, was it goldfish only have a memory of about five seconds and so when they're swimming about there is no um there is no time and space element particularly there's just this feeling that they belong to the all and if fish swim in the sea that's the whole ocean and that's where Pisces belong and so the problem for Pisces and the Pisces condition is uh, summed up in this question how does an incarnate human being express the formless 
if there is a level of consciousness at which we're all one, called a unity consciousness or a nirvanic state or uh, what, whatever that, what is that level at which everybody belongs to and that their differences uh, in their body and in their mind and in their singularity, uh, it becomes one. So singularity becomes multiplicity. But I don't think these words really express it so much because they're all mind. When we're trying to get this sublime experience of self-surrender self that the Christian mystics called henosis, which is a mystical union with God, or whether it's a, a state of samadhi with a with a, a kind of such a, a pleasant nectar um, experience, a kind of strange buzzing around the spine in which you can just let go of time and you can let go of things. Uh, uh, that experience comes in some uh, uh, meditation uh, states. Some people are there all the time, like the great Sri Ramana Maharshi, who died in 1952 but he was the great one of the great saints of India and one of the great silent teachings teachers of silence so I'm just meditating just allowing my my mind to float around if you like this symbol of Pisces and Neptune in these nebulous states which are half awake um, and and half alive in, in in the sense of being on terra firma the psyche of Pisces are never quite here because they know they're connected to some distant, distant past belonging. I, I also feel from Pisces, one of my things that I say sometimes is that there's an inherent knowledge that this is a passing experience, that the single life is eventually just going to float back into the all. And if this is translates to the personality, so I can see some Pisces sometimes not bothering um they don't bother to answer questions directly if they feel like coming out of their trance state or their their inner malingering or uh, maybe they want to just commune with their own imagination their own feelings for a while and you can see this strange experience with Pisces that sometimes they're there and sometimes they're not you can perhaps see it in the eyes as if the they're, they're, they're not they're not communicating exactly with the objective reality outside of the that there is this um, sea they've gone back into the the mists uh, of a strange state and they're, they're, they're still alive obviously dwelling there but the the contact with them is is nebulous it's it's as if it's talking through the fog sometimes and maybe that's what it's like to be a Pisces that they have a deep connection to the imaginal a deep connection to what is um, beyond the pale, beyond that. This is why it's often connected to spirituality and psychism. Although you can get just as many politicians or scientists with Pisces because politicians become absorbed in their ideals, like Richard Nixon, who had son opposed um, uh, Neptune in cancer. He was very absorbed in, in this ide uh, ideal society. Neptune was in the 11th house and he, he, he wanted to bring a, a, his, the conditioning of his, of his past was so difficult. Uh, the loss of two of his uh, brothers, the uh, uh, appalling difficulties and depression this brought upon his parents. Um, I, I feel that his ambition rose in an attempt in a way to heal the family wounds. He had survivor's guilt and in a sense the rest of his life was sacrificed towards creating the highest possible ideal in life that he could and this meant attaining the presidency of the United States. There was a lot wrong with his psychology of course but uh, which eventually brought him down but I, I, I still think that this sun Neptune person was so absorbed into the ideal that sometimes the the end justified the means. In other words, what he was trying to do in his own mind, he deceived himself, I think, into thinking that the ways and means that he got to, got to where he was going was okay, because the end was all important. You can get that with some Pisces too, that uh, they can self-deceive or deceive others, and they are the great shape-shifters of the personality. They tend to feel or naturally be into the other person that they become something different. They shift shape and then when they're gone, they may shift shape again. 
the sign is uh, collectively the end of the zodiac, which isn't really true, of course. It's the, it's just the beginning of the zodiac. Does spring start in early March, or does it start in uh, or at the first point of Aries? Astrologically, it begins the first point of Aries, but actually, it, it comes out of that sea, and so it's the end of a cycle, but it's the beginning of another, and so that's why it's called a mutable sign, of course, because it's the end of a season, the beginning of another, and there is this non-boundary, and somehow something emerges eventually from it. No one quite knows when the seasons start, which is why the mutable signs are always at the end of the seasons. So it can produce great things. The sign of Pisces contains all of the other signs. So Pisces can fool you sometimes. You can think they're not listening and they've heard every word. You can think they're not there and they actually are. They can be funny, joyous, um, uh, comical, they can play games, but in the end, all of these things, again, are passing experiences. They're not the end result. So the actual Pisces personality is a person that blends in with the world and moves through it like a passing show. It's as if they live life constantly in some kind of film uh, and the only constancy is the experiences to w which they have and then they pass out. So I think I'll end that uh, there and perhaps draw upon some of the mythology in the next video.